Hello and welcome to El Expo and despite no one wanting it to happen, the European Super League is back. As always, since enough of you put it in the comments, I've decided to bring you part 2 of this Football Manager simulation where all the top teams are competing in one league. We've had part 1 of our newly formed European Football League with the best teams from across the continent competing in one Football League pyramid. The English Football League has been reformed, it is now the European Football League, with the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona coming against Liverpool, Man City and Man United, as well as a whole host of other top European teams. In episode 1 we had English and specifically Manchester dominance, with Man City and Man United splitting the first three European Premier League titles between them, while we had big performances from the likes of PSG, not so much Real Madrid. Big players are being swapped around between the elite clubs, all scrambling to get that edge in the only competition that matters. So as always, let's simulate three more years into the future and check in after every season to see what's going on. Let's go. Okay, so this is where we've left things in the European Premier League. Man City had won it, beaten Juventus to the title. Ten points clear Man City were. We're in their second European Premier League. Obviously, the other winner was Man United. Let's simulate a year in the future. Let's see if anyone can stop this English and Manchester dominance. Surely someone can. Let's find out. Okay, so here we are, the 9th of June 2023, and as you can see, Manchester City have done it again. They've won back-to-back -back European Premier Leagues for the first time. Obviously, you look there, they won the first one, Man United won it, then City won it back, and they've done it again, back-to-back -back European Premier Leagues. This time, they were seven points clear of Barcelona, who were closely followed by Real Madrid. They are classical giants back with a vengeance this year. I mean, Real Madrid were crap the year before. It looked like they could have gone down. This time, they've... Kind of challenge for the title, but not. Man United and Liverpool battled it out for 6th and 7th. Man United getting the bragging rights there, but the Spanish clubs have had a resurgence. Three of them in the top five. PSG doing well again. Look at the play stats there, they've topped that, so you wonder why they haven't done better in the league. Firmino, the top goal scorer, followed by Mbappe. Cristiano Ronaldo still doing well at the age of 38. And he's still got another year on his contract, but he's loving the European Premier League. He's doing fantastic. Much better than Lionel Messi, I assume. Let's quickly go to Barcelona, actually. Let's see how Messi's getting on. Messi's not even the captain. Where's Lionel Messi? He's retiring. Messi's hanging up his boots. Next season, sorry. Next season. Got excited. Don't know why I got excited. I just thought, ooh, Ronaldo's outplaying him. But have a look there. Messi. God, that's a really poor season from Lionel Messi. An average rating of 7.16 in a season where Barcelona came second. Antoine Griezmann's their star player, followed by Ansu Fati, and then Frankie de Jong, Lionel Messi weird down there, not that impressive at all. So who's gone down? Borussia Mönchengladbach have gone straight down after just coming up. Arsenal have been relegated and Leicester. So two English clubs have been binned out of the European Premier League, which means we're down to five clubs now. Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea and Spurs. Where are Spurs? Are Spurs in this? Or did Spurs get relegated at some point? Tottenham, there they are, 13th, sorry. I was looking for the word Spurs, not Tottenham. They came 13th, so they were the worst English team not to be relegated, so that's something to shout about. Have a look at the average rate in there. Kylian Mbappe, the star player, is 7.85. Three of the top four were PSG players. Neymar up there. Harry Kane doing well for Man City. Let's see how he did en route to winning another title. Only seven goals, seven assists. So he's turning that creator we all know he is in reality nowadays. I mean, guri has gone to Liliverpool after that impressive season for Hoffenheim. £79 million the Reds spent on him. Let's see who's the Reds manager now. Thomas Tuchel. So did Pep get the sack? I'm sure Pep went there. Pep got the sack. He's unemployed now. He's a wanted man. Wanted by Chelsea, PSG and Atletico Madrid. The big manager's just on a merry-go-round here. Virgil van Dijk the skipper. He's replaced Jordan Henderson. Let's have another little peruse here. Bayern Munich, the best German team. Not doing great. Napoli, the best Italian team, beating Inter Milan and Juventus. Juventus down in 14th. They came second last year. It just showed this is quite a competitive league because, I mean, every game's a big game. And if you lose one, then you lose another, then you're out of form and you just, you just can't get it back. Whereas Man City, a picture of consistency by the looks of things, winning their second title in a row. But let's go down to the championship. Let's see who's coming up. Let's see who's done well there. So coming up is Athletic Bilbao. They beat Ajax on penalties to win the playoffs. Borussia Dortmund are back, they've won the league with 91 points and they'll be joined by another German team, Hertha Berlin. Some big teams in the Skybet European Championship who haven't came up, you've got Valencia, Ajax, Monaco, Everton are in there, they've done well. But relegated Torino, West Ham and Bayer Leverkusen. So there'll be three English teams in it next season with Leicester and Arsenal dropping down. 
Esposito, the top scorer for Dortmund, 19 goals, 20 year old, on loan from Inter Milan. I mean, that says a lot that Inter Milan are loaning a player out to a big club like Borussia Dortmund, who's helped them out of the championship. Esposito's got to get a crack in the top flight now. That's two seasons in a row he's done wonders in the second tier. Dortmund started Haaland, or did he go? Let's go to the transfers. Erling Haaland went to Liverpool for £85 million. How did he get on? Only eight Premier League goals. Oh, that's quite disappointing, isn't it? Jude Bellingham's gone to Bayern Munich for £37 million. Not that big a fee. Not that great a season for him. Maybe he needs some more time in the Championship to think about what he's done. But there's just so much money flying around. I mean, Borussia Dortmund in the Championship spent nearly £200 million. So let's have a look at the cup competitions. Let's see how clubs have got on there. Oh, the Carabao Cup's a thing now. It's been won by Chelsea. That hadn't been a thing before. Man United have lost in the final. I know it has been being a thing. I've just been missing it. Oh, it was just the first year it didn't happen. So apologies. In the first episode, we missed a load of trophies. Juventus won something. Then Liverpool won it. But this time, it's Chelsea who won the League Cup. 3-1 that beat Man United in the final. How about the FA Cup? What's been going on there? Obviously, the FA Cup is slightly different. It goes to a two-legged affair later on in the competition. Barcelona have won it. Barcelona winning the FA Cup, beating PSG 1-0 in the final. Philip Coutinho getting the winner for the Catalan Giants. So there we go. That's the end of Season 1. Man City once again winning their third European Premier League two in a row. Let's simulate a year in the future. Can anyone stop Man City? Let's find out. Okay, so here we are, season two, the 8th of June, 2024, and rejoice, we have stopped the Manchester dominance. Finally, a team who isn't from England has won the European Premier League, and it is everyone's favourite club, PSG? It's someone different, that's all that matters. The top of the table has got a very different look. Out of the top five, you've only got... I mean, this is just... This is a very different table. Manchester City are down in sixth. Borussia Dortmund promoted have came third. Juventus have climbed to fourth. Real Madrid down to fifth. I mean, Barcelona are all the way down in 14th. Quite a shocking season this is, but PSG have won it with 72 points. Fortunately for PSG, they had it wrapped up by the final days. They were held to a 1-1 draw by relegated Real Sociedad. Atletico Madrid beat Roma 3-2, but that could only close the gap to two points as PSG won their first ever European Premier League. And interestingly, it's the first time, I think since Firmino arrived, that he hasn't been the top goal scorer. It was Andrea Bellotti with 17 goals. I mean, how many ways? It's a three-way tie. Andrea Bellotti, Paolo Dybala, and then Nicolo Zagnolo, who's joined Real Madrid. How much has he gone for? £90 million from Bayern Munich. What a season he's had. Two great seasons, actually, at the Bernabeu. Marcus Rashford's at Bayern Munich. Wow. Taking his talents to Germany for £128 million. So many players hitting double figures. It's just a who's who of talent. And Tammy Abraham. I like Tammy Abraham. I don't even know why I said that. But Andrea Bellotti, the top goal scorer, alongside Paolo Dybala and Nicolo Zagnolo. So you've got two Italian players and a player playing in Italy. But once again, the top player in the division is Kylian Mbappe. In fact, there's a name I haven't even mentioned at all. Aiden Hazard, the third best player, 13 assists. I mean, what's been going on with him? He's just been quietly going about his business. But this is the best season. Actually, no, it's not even the best season. He did even better a couple of years before. It just shows the amount of talent in this league that we forgot about a player like Aiden Hazard. Ruben Neves doing well for Juventus. He's left Wolves. In fact, he left Wolves a while ago. He joined Lazio, then Chelsea, and now Juventus, and he's had a great first season there. 12 assists in Turin, but it was only enough to finish fourth. But I mean, Juventus were only five points off top spot, so this is a much more tighter league. Man City, still the best English club, coming sixth, followed by Liverpool. There were only two goals ahead of them. And then you've got Man United, Chelsea, and Spurs all in the cluster from ninth down to 11th. Relegated, who we've got, Real Sociedad, and two promoted teams, Hertha Berlin and Athletic Bilbao. So at the minute, it's, it's English dominance in the European Premier League. We've got five clubs there. Let's go down to the Championship. Let's see what's happened. As we say, Sociedad, Hertha Berlin and Athletic Bilbao have been relegated. But coming up, we have got Fiorentina won the playoffs, beating Valencia in the final. 
Borussia Mönchengladbach coming straight back up. They've won the title with 84 points. And Arsenal are coming straight back up. Coming second with 81. So it's the top three have all come up. But it was a close run thing. Three points separated third place Fiorentina and seventh place Marseille. So Marseille just missing out on a playoff spot. Leipzig were up there again. Ajax were up there again. How have the English clubs done? Leicester came 10th. Not too well, but Emi Buendia was one of the best players. Kevin Volland has won the Golden Boot this time with 22 goals. But still wasn't enough to get Monaco promoted. Where if Monaco came? Their 13th Monaco. The championship looks like it's been very competitive. Nice have gone down on goal difference with Wolfsburg surviving. PSV down 20th. You'd think they'd be doing much better. The Dutch team haven't really bought into this European Football League yet. They're not really thriving. But let's have a look at the cup competitions. Let's see who's, who's done what. So the League Cup's been won by Borussia Dortmund, just newly promoted, done well in the league, came third, and they've won some silverware, beating Porto 1-0 in the final. Augustin Erzi with a penalty, who's some Argentinian guy. He's on the transfer list as well. That's what you get for scoring the winner in a cup final. I mean, he has been crap, actually. He's been rubbish, and he's still got the winner in the cup final. What about the FA Cup? Let's take a look. The FA Cup won by Atletico Madrid, another Spanish winner, beating Chelsea 1-0 in the final. Who got the goal? It was Andrea Bellotti, of course, the star for Athletic Madrid. Forget about Sancho, Felix, Saul, Camavinga. God, this is a good team. But no, it was Bellotti with the goal to win the final up against Chelsea. I mean, let's have a look at this Chelsea team. Who have they got? Donnarumma, Pavard, Carr, Florentino Luis, Sandro Tonali, and Didi. Memphis Depay, Richarlison, Pulisic. A, a good team, not a great team, but a very good team. But there we have it, PSG. Finally toppling the English clubs. Let's see who's the manager there. It's Pep Guardiola. Goodness me. Let's have a look at PSG's team. Because this is going to be, just quite frankly, ridiculous. Andre Onana in goal. We've got Max Ahrens, Ruben Diaz, Abu Diallo, Kieran Tierney, Bentancur, Tielemans, Pogba, Mbappe, Neymar, Firmino, Kempembe, Zakaria, Hummels, Verratti, Icardi, Koeman. That's just, that's an incredible team. And the fix that midfield. I mean, Tielemans and Pogba. Pogba's hasn't been that good. Obviously Mbappe, their best player, then Neymar, then Firmino. What a team this PSG side is. Let's have a look at the transfers, what kind of money they've been spending. £234 million spent en route to winning the title. Ruben Diaz, the big money arrival for £54 million. That's a lie, it was Benton Kerr, £76 million. Should have just clicked to get the sorted out in order. I know you always say it and I never do it. He's, he's approved us wrong. Let's have a look at the managerial changes. Juventus have sacked their managers. Tottenham have sacked theirs at the end of the season. Liverpool have sacked Thomas Tuchel. Man City have sacked Senal Gunes. Bayern have sacked Pochettino. And Real Madrid have sacked Allegri. There's just so many changes. Oli's been sacked by Man United. Where's he now? Inter Milan. He's the Inter Milan manager. Well done, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer for getting himself another big job. I mean, let's have a look at the transfers here. In, the, in 2024... The big deal was Joshua Zerksey to Man City for £128 million. Then you've got Everton from Man City to Chelsea. That's confusing. So only one deal's broke the £100 million mark. Let's go to 2023 because we've never looked at this before. Rashford, £128 million. Callum hudson Adoy, £104 million. Florentino Luis cost £88 million. Massive, massive fees. Year before... Pogba, 136 million, and Awa, 120 million. Then you got Jaden Sancho, just shy of 100 million. Year before that, Marquinhos crossed 100 million. Year before that, this was the big one 222 million pounds on Harry Kane, 143 million pounds for Robbie Firmino. Don't know why I call him Robbie, he's never been called that in his life. And 108 million pounds for Usman Dembele. But there we go, that's the second season we're going to look at. Let's simulate a year in the future. We're going to have another different winner, let's find out. Okay, so here we are. This is the final season we're going to look at today. Let me know in the comments below if you want a part three of this European Premier League simulation. But as you can see, we've got a different winner. And this time, it's Inter Milan. That is a shock. Inter Milan have came from nowhere to win the title by 10 points. Surely not. Ole Gunnar, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has won the title. Well done, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Everyone wrote you off, me included. And with Lewis Cook as your vice captain... Oh, that is... What has gone on here? They've only spent £84 million as well. Mason Mount coming from Saudi Arabia. Don't know why he'd gone there. Let's have a look at the team. 
Sebastiano Esposito after years on loan in the Championship has got his chance in the Premier League. And he's been absolutely wonderful. Well, he's, been, he's done all right. He's got 11 goals. Who else they got? Hudson Adoy's done great. Sadio Mane has done great. How much does he cost? Sadio Mane arrived on a free. Liverpool let him go for absolutely nothing. So Inter Milan have become the first Italian winner of the European Premier League. A European Premier League, which is now down to the third most reputable league in the world. Not quite sure how that's happened, considering it's got all of the teams there. But whatever, doesn't matter. Inter Milan, top of the table. Liverpool, I think that's their best ever finish, second. But only two points separated second and fifth. PSG, last year's winners, down to fifth. Man City have had a bit of a resurgence. They're up to fourth. Barcelona have also jumped up their third have a look who's gone down. Napoli, Porto and Borussia Mönchengladbach have gone straight back down once again. The relegation places doesn't seem to have been too, too confusing really. There was eight points between Fiorentina, newly promoted Fiorentina and Napoli. So one Italian team survives in the place of another. But Real Madrid down to 15th and Borussia Dortmund down to 16th. The inconsistency in this league is absolutely astounding. Kylian Mbappe has won the Golden Boot though, 18 goals, so well done Kylian, that's his first Golden Boot I believe, but he actually isn't the best player in the league this time, it was Frankie de Jong beating him by 0 0.01, he got 17 assists, so well done him, also in the goal scoring charts you'll notice Fabio Silva there, he's playing for Hoffenheim, he cost £20 million pounds from Lyon, obviously Wolves got rid of him, he's doing well in the Premier League. Hoffenheim, one of the surprise packages, still, you just wouldn't expect Hoffenheim to be there, but there they are, 14th above Madrid, above Dortmund. Karim Adeyemi, he's done very well for Arsenal, after his 20, only £20 million pounds he cost, from a League One team Salzburg the year before, and he's got 16 goals in his first ever season in the European Premier League. Arsenal, as we can see there, came 13th, only just behind Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich have been one of the surprise teams who just haven't done well. Antonio Conte, the manager there, they just seem really underpowered in football manager. I don't know why that is, but who knows. So there we go, Inter Milan, the champions. I'm, I'm going to have a look at the managers here, as there's been some interesting developments. Manchester City, managed by Max Allegri. Barcelona are managed by Ronald Koeman again. No, Ronald Koeman hasn't been there this whole time. He's back. They've sacked Rodgers, they've sacked Ancelotti, and now they've gone back to Ronald Koeman. Of all the options in the world, why would you go back to him? Liverpool, I've got Roger Schmidt. Can't remember who he was manager of before. PSG, I've still got Guardiola, they've stuck by him despite coming fifth. Real Madrid have gone back to Zinedine Zidane. So many clubs have gone back to their managers. So this will be Zidane's third spell as manager. And he's, he might get sacked because they've done so well. Ben Chilwell's the captain at Real Madrid. Oh, my head hurts from all the confusion. Arsenal, who's the manager there? Lucien Favre. That, that's good. Dortmund, who's they got? Brendan Rodgers. Juventus. Senal Gunes, the former Man City man. And Man United have got Diego Simeone. And they've only came 7th. Speaking of Simeone, I thought Madrid down in 10th. But let's have a look at the cup competitions. Let's see who's won them. I've just been saying they've not been doing too well, but they've won the League Cup. Bayern Munich beating Real Madrid in the final 1-0. It was Luis Alberto's goal who won it for the Bavarians. Let's have a little blitz through this Bayern Munich team. Kimmich, they've still got Zoomers there. Alaba's still there. Taliso, Kovacic. Ayazabel, Usman Dembele, Rashford. Lewandowski's still there at the age of 36. Is he still doing well? No. Lewandowski not doing too well at all. He was at the start, but he's just dropped off a lot lately. That's quite interesting. Sorry, I'm going to go back to that. I don't know if you noticed it there, but the Bayern Munich reserves, Bayern Munich 2, play in the Wessex League 1 division. So that's good. It's nice to know, isn't it? Quick little look at Real Madrid. They've got Varane, Ayar, Dean, Casemiro, and Didi, Valverde, Zaniolo. It's not, the, it's not amazing, team. It's not amazing. Rodrigo, the main striker, by the looks of things. Well, he was in this game. Just doing all right. The Real Madrid B team out of interest play in the Southern League, Division 1 South. Although they were previously in the Northern Premier League, Division 1 South East. How can you go from the Northern League to the Southern League? It doesn't matter. Who knows? 
Not my problem. To buy Munich win the League Cup, what about the FA Cup? The FA Cup was won by PSG, so despite not winning the league, they have at least won the cup, beating Man United 2-1 in the final. Oh, this wow, this is a dramatic final. Romelu Lukaku back at Manchester United, put the Red Devils in front, then Bobby Firmino, a former Liverpool player, got the equaliser. And in the 89th minute, the former Manchester United record siren, the man who was lambasted during every minute of his Old Trafford career, Paul Pogba has netted an 89th minute winner. What a story there at Wembley. PSG winning the FA Cup for Pep Guardiola. And Mason Greenwood's there as well. I don't know why I missed that. Mason Greenwood, how much has he gone for? I bet it's a lot. Wow. £197 million to take Mason Greenwood from Man United to Paris Saint-Germain. Huge, huge fee there. PSG still strong as ever. But as we say, Napoli, Porto and Borussia Mönchengladbach relegated. Let's see who's coming up to the top flight. Valencia have beaten Lyon in the playoff final on penalties. And also they'll be joined there by another Spanish team, Sevilla, who will back up. And for the first time, the European Premier League will have a Russian team. Zenit St. Petersburg have won the title with Jose Bordelos, Bordelas rather, as the manager. There's a, a British feel of the team. James Tarkovsky is the captain and Scott McTominay is the vice captain. Any other? There's some interesting names there. Mikey Johnston's there. Pedro Neto, Malcolm, obviously Ben Davies. There's many other English names. Jaffet Tanganga, Sean Longstaff. What an odd little team Zenit St. Petersburg have got, but it is a team that is going to be playing in the European Premier League. So one to look out for in part three if you want it. Harry Maguire's playing for Sociedad. Quite you can have an absolute field day just going through the team seeing where players have obscurely winded up at. Harry Maguire, Real Sociedad for £38 million and he's done bloody brilliantly. Well done Harry Maguire, you needed it. Who's gone down? Cologne, Bill... Christ, Bill Bow were in the top fight, now they've dropped down to the third tier. Who else we've got? Newcastle have made... Wow, Newcastle have made it up to the second... How can Newcastle be in the second division? That is quite impressive. They're there with Everton. Leicester, so that you've got three English teams there, Everton, Newcastle and Leicester. That is really surprising. But as we say, it's Zenit St. Petersburg, Sevilla and Valencia coming up. What I'm going to do is, before we wrap this up, I'm going to have a look at the transfers again. Let's see what's gone on in the final year. Obviously, we had that massive deal for Mason Greenwood. Has anything else eclipsed that? So, obviously, we've got to look at last summer for those deals. Mason Greenwood there, £197 million. The Xerxes deal, obviously, that must have been a January one it was. Kai Havertz... £101 million pounds up in Chelsea for Man United. And Jude Bellingham, £93 million to go from Bayern Munich to Chelsea. Let's see how he's done. Back at an English club for the first time in a long, long time since he left Birmingham. He's done well there. He did well at Bayern Munich in his second year. I slagged him off and he's done well. So well done Jude Bellingham. Getting to grips with his career. Nice to see. Uh, so far in 2025, £67 million pounds has been the biggest deal, but we haven't had a summer transfer window. Ethan Amberdew has gone to Borussia Dortmund, and Joe Gomez has gone to Benfica. Dominic Solanke. Dominic Solanke is still getting massive transfer fees. £22 million pounds has taken him to Lazio. Oh, how? Why, why would they spend £22 million pounds on what is a, a League 2 player? Who knows? Absolute madness. But as we say, let's have a look back at this European Premier League. I know I've taken a weird route there. Inter Milan, the winners, on 76 points. 10 clear of Liverpool. So the English dominance has came to an end. We've had a French winner, now we've had an Italian winner. Are we going to have a German winner? I mean, the German teams aren't really doing that great. Bayern Munich down in 12th, and then you've got Hoffenheim and Dortmund. We still haven't had a Spanish winner. Considering we've got Barcelona, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid, there's been so many Spanish teams in the European Premier League, but one hasn't won it yet. I wonder if we go three more years into the future, will we get a Spanish winner? Let me know in the comments below if that's what you want to see. But we will leave it there. So to round up today, we've had another Man City win, a PSG win, and then an Inter Milan win. The shock winner, I think, so far of the European Premier League. What an episode it has been. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Alexport. And until next time, we will see you around.